Lin, and um, I'm a polymer chemist by training. And for the last um, how many years, how many decades, I have been working in like from the plastics industries to food, and today my latest passion is hair. So I have friends asking me, oh, how do you move from one area to another, and is was there a lot of adjustments you have to make? And I. Well, I thought about it. There's really not much of an adjustment um, because, yeah, I saw them all as building blocks and very much like polymers to me. So today, what I'm going to share with you is uh, my secret recipe, which is really the building blocks. So these are my building blocks. I call this the product life chain, just like the polymer chain that I know of. So basically, I see in every product, a history and a future. So for for example, here you have a product. You, before you have a product, you need to have the design. Then you have to select the raw material, manufacturing methods, and then you have the product. And after that, you have to find a use for it. When you use it, you have to clean it, maintain it, and care for it. So this is basically, to me, in a nutshell, what the product is all about. So whether it's polymer or not, it has worked for me. So today I'm going to give you two examples. One is how I manage um, to apply this to plastics. And another example later, uh, apply to hair, which is my current passion. So let's look at um, the hair, uh, sorry, chair. Gosh, it's just different by the letter C. <laughs> So the chair, if, if, I, if you were to ask me to, let's say, look at how to design a chair, and what can you do if, when you see a chair, what do you think of it? Do you think of the history of the chair, which is really the resin and molding? Take, for example, this chair. This is something, oh, it's not very visible, but it's a white chair that is found in the canteen, you know, the school canteen. Yeah, and this is a white chair, it's made of plastic, it's polyethylene chair. When you look at this chair, first you get a designer to design it, then you, for me, as a polymer chemist, I have to think of where the chair is going to be at, and what kind of material is going to be exposed to. If it's in the canteen, then perhaps there will be some curry sauce, some people will spill the Coca-Cola over it, and as a result, the material has to be mm, quite strong because you're going to sit on it. And it has to be acid resistant because Coca-Cola is highly acidic and oil resistant because curry sauce is also oily. So let's look at the molecular structure. I know many of you have already done chemistry before. Maybe you recognize this from the petrochemical industry, a small molecule called ethylene gas. As you can see, it is really just carbon, hydrogen. There isn't much of the oxygen or nitrogen, so there's no ability to uh, form hydrogen bonding with water. So you can imagine this will be a, a material that is going to be repel water. And it's quite straight. There isn't any bulky side group, so it's going to be a little bit um, easy to pack. So if you form a long chain, it becomes a polymer chain. Basically, you use all the repeat units to form a polymer and get polymer chain. The longer the chain is, the stronger the material. I hope this bunch of chemistry is nothing to blow you out. And then, if you have a linear chain, the good thing is you can pack them together. So when they're all packed together, they'll be tougher material and also more chemical resistant. If you want to make it low density, you just have to branch it then they can't pack so closely together, then you get low-density polyethylene. Sometimes you may like to cross-link it. That is, if you want to subject your chair to a very high temperature, you cross-link it so that it is temperature resistant. I don't think you have a need for that. So we keep it that way. So now you have the polymer resin, then you look at the, how to use it. So you start from resin, you melt it, mold it, then use it pretty much like what we need to do to ourselves after we are born, or what we do to our babies. Like what they say in the church, 
So if you melt a polymer, what do you get? You get a mass of polymer chain, not in any order, random, and it's slower. At the correct temperature, molten temperature, you can pour this into a mold, fill up the mold. If you immediately freeze it, you will not get much of a strength, you get a, like an agar-agar, you know, <laughs> gelatin. But if you want to induce some strength to it, you can stretch it a little bit at a certain temperature that is not too molten. And then you get, you know, fully aligned, just like the soba noodles. And then you can get some strength. What if you want to have a chair that is very tough? You want some crystalline region to hold the structure and the amorphous region to give the toughness. So if somebody were to drop a very heavy item on the chair, it can sort of deform a little bit and bounce back. So you need a bit of an amorphous region to, 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 to take the shock. So to get a resilient polymer or a chair, you need to have this semi-crystalline uh, polymer structure. So that makes a difference between a chair made in, I wouldn't say any country, but a, a chair made with a, a very fast uh, production time, that means fast, fast cooling time, or a chair that is given enough time to cool, you get better uh, quality product. So that wraps up the, the molding of polymer. I have enjoyed this project very much, by the way. But um, unfortunately, I had to move job uh, because my boss said I need to set up a bakery. So I, I, that was how I moved away from plastics. And, but today, due to time constraint, I'm going to move to hair because hair is what I'm working on currently now. And I'm so excited to share my stints with hair. You can say, well, plastics and hair. So what's the, what's the relation? Well, they both start from building block. You know, earlier on, I had ethylene gas. With hair, you were talking about amino acid as the starting building block. You can see this is an amino acid with the amino group and the carbonyl group. If you are going to put so many of these repeat units together, you will have a long chain protein or polypeptide. Basically, you have peptide chains. But it's not so simple for our hair because hair is very, very strong. So you need some special structure. A little bit crystalline and also a little bit amorphous. And it has to be very long. So therefore, um, the hair from Mother Nature is in a helical shape. And this helical shape is held firmly together um, by cross-linking bonds like sulfide bonds and hydrogen bonding as well as uh, intermolecular bonding against the uh, adjacent amino acids. So therefore, this is a very firm structure and very, very um, strong in tensile strength. So if you then go back to my product line chain, product life cycle chain, I'm very happy and very fortunate and to not have to design the protein because this is already a gift from Mother Nature. And also the molding of hair, the complicated helical structure, I don't have to mold it, it's already there, uh, produced in our body, coded by our DNA. So therefore, I just already have the hair grown from our skin and 100% covered with keratin, which is, which is the structure. This structure is called keratin, by the way. The whole body of us, all our skin, is covered by keratin. So my current project is to look at hair, the hair on our skin, on our hair, on our head, and how to take care of it, cleanse it, and care for it. So you see, 90%, more than 90% of our hair is produced by, is made of keratin. Basically, it is a bunch of fibrous structures bundled together and then wrap around by flattened keratin uh, flakes or cells. And then this keratin, uh, the, the, called the cuticle, the cuticle provides protection to, to the cortex, which is the fibrous uh, keratin, and makes our hair shiny. 
and it makes, makes it a little bit more uh, water repellent and strong. And our hair, when we talk about hair, we can't avoid talking about the skull. That is where our hair, it contains the hair follicles where our hair is um, grows. And you can see here the sebaceous gland also take um, occasionally will uh, secrete sebum to hydrate and moisturize the hair and the scalp. Okay, then now we talk about hair care. That is my job. So when we talk about hair care in, in Singapore, we have to first look at the climate, climate conditions and our lifestyle. So in, when you look at climate, we, we are in tropical climate, hot and humid. Hot, our temperature is, is in a very strange uh, region where sometimes it can be drying, sometimes it's just too humid. So when it's drying, our scalp becomes dry. And then when it's uh, humid, our scalp becomes very, very uh, humid <laughs> because keratin actually contains a peptide linkage that can absorb water. So it, you can see that, and also at high, high humidity, like higher than 96%, microorganisms can, can really grow. And that explains why in Singapore, or more than anywhere else, we often hear about scalp irritation or discomfort, like itching. And uh, we also hear about thinning hair, and apart from that, we have frizzy hair. How do you get frizzy hair? Frizzy hair is when the hair, is, hair fiber is exposed to moisture, and it actually has high uptake of moisture, and therefore the hair swells. When the hair swells, your curls are undefined, or rather becomes undefined, and not in order. Therefore, you call that frizzy. So in the shampoo products, what must we do? We must first look at removing the, the, the grime and dirt. That's very, very important. And you must uh, minimize organic residue on the scalp. And the important thing, because we have to shampoo our hair every day, it is important that we preserve the scalp lipids and hydration control plan. <laughs> so basically, when you go through this uh, um, analysis and scrutiny, what you need and you provide what you, what you need to provide, you will not go wrong. Then the next is the lifestyle. Because our hair looks thin, um, due to the weight from the moisture. Most of the people in Singapore likes to dye their hair, perm, rebond, straighten, everything. So when you do that, remember our hair is in its original form um, held together by cross-linkers, the sulfite-sulfite bond. So if you have curly hair or frizzy hair and you want to straighten, you have to really uh, destroy the bonds, cut it up, and then straighten it, and then put um, form the bond again. So this is how, what you do to your hair. It is a, it's already a, a, a set polymer, but you, you have to break it so that you can reform it, either straighten or curl, and reform again. So therefore, there's a lot of uh, porosity in the hair. And as a result, you, you, you do lose a lot of um, strength. And you, you can imagine your hair can break at some point. And a lot of, um, apart from chemical treatment, we do a lot of styling, like blow drying, back combing. All these lead to damage of cuticle. So as a result, we have to look at also um, in the conditioner, we have to look at repair of the, of the core, which is the cortex, by introducing other materials like protein or other bond linkers to replace the, the broken cross-linking bonds. And on the cuticle surface, we have to put in protection, like targeted, um, targeted repair and protection to the cuticle so that when we comb our hair or style, we don't damage the cuticle and we can preserve the shine. Lastly, we have to hydrate the hair so that when we move out, we have to put in magnex, you know, moisture magnet on the hair so that when we move out into from the air conditioned styling salon to the, the outer atmosphere, you do not uh, have this, what you call, frizzy hair. Because your hair is already saturated with moisture, you will not have higher moisture uptake. It's already in the equilibrium state. 
So if you consider all these factors and you formulate your product in the correct way, what will you get? Ta -da. <laughs> it's a cutting edge technology. You see on the left side, yes, on the left side, what you see is cuticle is because it's well protected when it comes through, there's no damage. And because we do targeted repair, you don't see a huge uh, uh, a film on it. Because on the current technology, what you see is a large molecular coating over the hair. Therefore, you don't get the shine you need. You don't get the lightness you need. So, it doesn't need to... It is not rocket science to come with targeted... Uh, to come with cutting-edge technology as long as you carry out your vigilance in checking at every stage what you need to, to, to do in order to get the targeted results. So important thing is what you must understand your problem. <laughs> Basically understand your substrate, understand the product, and how to clean it, and how to preserve it, and how to care for it. So thank you very much for your attention with this. I 